This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The Quarantine Report. I'm Amy Goodman, with Juan González. For the first time this morning, presumptive Democratic presidential nominee Joe Biden has responded to sexual assault allegations against him on MSNBC's Morning Joe, breaking his silence after weeks of mounting pressure to deny allegations put forward by Tara Reid, a former Biden staffer, who says he sexually assaulted her in 1993. In a statement Friday morning, Biden said, quote, I want to address allegations by a former staffer that I engaged in misconduct 27 years ago. They aren't true. This never happened, he said. This is Biden speaking on MSNBC just before we went to broadcast. Would you please go on the record with the American people? Did you sexually assault Tara Reid? No, it is not true. I'm saying unequivocally, it never, never happened. And it didn't. It never happened. Do you remember her? Do you remember any, any types of complaints that she might have made? I don't remember any type of complaint she <clears throat> may have made. It was 27 years ago, and uh, I don't remember, nor does anyone else that I'm aware of. And uh, the fact is that I don't remember. I, I, I don't remember any complaint ever having been made. Have you or your campaign, have you reached out to her? No, I have not reached out to her. It was 27 years ago. This never happened. And uh, when she first made the claim, we made it clear that it never happened. And uh, that's as simple as that. Joe Biden was being questioned by Morning Joe's Mika Brzezinski about his senatorial records at the University of Delaware, which are sealed to the public, and his comments during the Brett Kavanaugh Supreme Court hearings, in which he said, for a woman to come forward in the glaring lights of focus nationally, you've got to start off with the presumption that at least the essence of what she's talking about is real." Unquote. Joe Biden's denial comes as two more people have come forward this week to corroborate the account of Tara Reid. Business Insider reported earlier this week that Reid's former neighbor said the pair discussed the assault in detail in the mid-1990s, and that Tara Reid described then-Senator Biden pushing her up against a wall and digitally penetrating her. A former colleague, who also knew Reid in the mid-90s, said she'd spoken of being sexually harassed by her former boss in Washington, D.C. Tara Reid first came forward with her allegations in March. She recounted the incident on Democracy Now! A warning. Her description is graphic. I was approached by my supervisor. She handed me a gym bag and said, hurry, Joe wants you wants this, um, so get it to him. He's meet you down towards the Capitol. And I went down the stairs, and I don't remember exactly where I was, um, because there's connections between the Russell Building and, and all of that and the corridors. But we were in a semi-private location. It wasn't a room. It wasn't the Russ, you know, the Russell office building. It was, I mean, in the Russ, his office, it was down in the corridors. And um, I handed him the gym bag, and then he... It was one, as I described, fluid moment. He was talking to me, and he said some things that I don't recall. And I was up against the wall, and he—I remember the coldness of the wall, and I remember his hands underneath my blouse and underneath my skirt, and his fingers penetrating me as he was kiss, trying to kiss me, and I was pulling away. And he pulled back, and he said, come on, man, I heard you liked me. But he was angry. It was like a tight voice. And he tended to smile when he was angry. And he isn't like the Uncle Joe, like everybody talks about now. He was younger. He was my dad's age at that time and very strong. And he looked insulted and angry. And I remember feeling like I had done something wrong when he said that statement. And then I was standing there when he said he was still near me. He said, pointed his finger and said, you're nothing to me. You're nothing. And he walked away. And I don't remember exactly where I went after. I think I went to the restroom to clean up, but I don't remember precisely. The next memory I have is sitting on the cold stairs and the Russell building back stairs where the big windows are. And I remember just my whole body shaking. And I remember knowing 
but knowing that I had made him angry and that my career was probably over, sitting um, on those stairs, the reality hit me. The next thing I remember was that night and talking to my mom, and she was like, you need to file a police report. It's a sexual assault, and I didn't think of it as sexual assault, and I didn't really understand, and I was trying to just get over the shock of it because I looked up to him. He was supposed to be a champion of women, and I was so thrilled to be at that office and so honored, and it, it shattered my life and changed the trajectory of my whole career in life, and I lost my job after I complained, and I was fired. That's former Biden staffer when he was senator, uh, Tara Reid, speaking in a Democracy Now! TV radio broadcast exclusive. To see the full interview, you can go to democracynow.org. We were following up on a podcast interview done by journalist Katie Halper. Many news outlets were slow to report Tara Reid's allegations, but her story gained renewed attention last weekend when archival video emerged of Reid's mother anonymously calling into Larry King's show on CNN in 1993 and making a reference to what happened to her daughter, Tara. Hello. Um, I'm wondering what um, uh, a, a staffer uh, would do, do besides go to the press in Washington. My daughter has just left there uh, after working for a prominent senator and could not get through with her problems at all. And the only thing she could have done was go to the press, and she chose not to do it out of respect for him. Or she had a story to tell, but out of respect for the person she worked for, she didn't tell it. That's true. Mm. Tara Reid has confirmed the voice of the caller was her mother, who died in 2016. Joe Biden's campaign has denied Reid's sexual assault claim, calling her allegation untrue. All this comes as Joe Biden has picked up several high-profile endorsements this week, including House Speaker Nancy Pelosi and Congressmember Pramila Jayapal, who co-chairs the Congressional Progressive Caucus. Well, for more, we're joined by the Business Insider reporter Rich McHugh. He's a former NBC News producer, where he worked with Ron and Farrow on the story of Harvey Weinstein's serial sexual assaults. Rich McHugh's recent investigation confirmed Tara Reid's accounts with two people who knew her in the 1990s and were joined by one of those women, Linda Lacasse, a former neighbor of Tara Reid, who's corroborated Reid's account. And she will be talking about that for the first time in a broadcast interview. Uh, Rich McHugh brought out the interview with her in print in Business Insider. Rich, let's Let's begin with you. Talk about this yeah. story. Um, Joe Biden, as we speak, is uh, saying it's not true. Well, I think that's not unexpected, you know, in, in, for someone in his position. Um, what I'll say is that when I started reporting on this, um, I, I go at every story like this with extreme skepticism. I never actually wanted to report on this story. Uh, it, it was it, it, one of the survivors in the Weinstein, you know, story that I've worked with, Sarah and Massey came to me and said, look, um, can you take a look at this? And I said, well, look, we might not like what we find, but um, if, if, if everybody's okay with that, I'll go down this road. And so the more that I've gone down the road uh, re reporting it, the more corroborating voices I've found. And when I, I you know, when she filed a police report um, and then when she, when I found uh, Linda, uh, you know, I, Linda is someone that struck me as entirely credible. She's like, look, I'm a lifelong Democrat. I'm um, voting for Biden regardless. And this happened. So I, I need to, in good faith, come forward and, and say that. So, um, you know, will we ever know that it's that there's 100 percent truth that this happened or did not happen? I don't think so. But, um, you know, this needs to be continued to be reported out. Um, I know this morning. Um, Joe Biden said he, he's calling on the National Archives to to release his paper. So we, we spoke to uh, the National Archives and said, look, there is some question about um, Tara Reid filing a, a complaint outside of this office, outside of the Biden office. If if that if you had that, would 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 that live there? And they told us that no, uh, they have no records from the, I believe it's called the Fair Employment Practices Office. And so that leads us to believe that there might be some of those papers within the University of Delaware and his senatorial papers, which is why we're calling on them to open them.
So let's go to Joe Biden speaking today. Um, Joe Biden speaking today on MSNBC, um, talking about that issue of um, uh, the University of Delaware archives. He was being Nothing questioned by Mika Brzezinski. the president or anybody else. I'm just asking, why not do a search for Tara Reid's name in the University of Delaware records? Look, I mean, who, who, who does that search? The University of Delaware. Uh, perhaps you set up a commission that can do it. I don't know. Whatever is the fairest way to create the most transparency. Well, this is, look, Mika, she said she filed a report. She has her employment records still. She said she refiled a report with the only office that would have a report in the United States Senate at the time. If the report was ever filed, it was filed there, period. Rich McHugh, your quick comment. From speaking to the National Archives, they say, no, they, they would not have that report, that it would, it, it would not be within the National Archives. Let's bring in Linda Lacasse, the former neighbor of Tara Reid, who's accused Democratic presidential candidate Joe Biden of sexual assault. Tara Reid accused him in 1993. We just played the clip of Tara describing what happened. Um, uh, Linda Lacasse came forward um, in uh, uh, just recently uh, in the Business Insider piece and has corroborated Tara Reid's account. Linda, this is your first time speaking on television about this. Can you tell us what happened in the mid-1990s? How did you know Tara? And then tell us what she told you and why you're coming forward today. Well, Tara was my uh, next-door neighbor. I moved uh, into the apartment uh, right next to her. And uh, we became close at that time. And um, we actually, she told me about it when we were having a conversation. And um, so, you know, as Rich uh, put forth in, in the article in the Business Insider, she, you know, I was having a moment, out, I was outside and I had just um, received some papers. And I was upset about them, and uh, she came over, and um, we were talking about um, about violence, because I had experienced violence myself. And um, she started telling me about Joe Biden and what he had done. And basically, she told me that he put his um, he put her up against a wall, and. He um, put his hand up his, her skirt, and he put his fingers inside her. And she was very distraught, and she was very upset, and she was crying. And that's how that conversation happened. We were just sitting on my front stoop in front of my apartment. And what year was this that you had that conversation? Well, it was either uh, 1994 or very early, I'm, yeah, I'm sorry, 1995 or early 1996. And Linda, um, if you could um, talk about your response at the time, she told you, did she tell you it was Senator Biden who she had worked for? She did. She did tell me that. And, you know, I really didn't pay that much attention at the time. I didn't really care much about politics. I didn't. Um, I knew she worked for him. I didn't know really who he was much. I didn't put that much importance on it. So, oops. So, but can you talk about why you've decided to come forward now? I understand you're a Biden supporter. Is that right? That's correct. I'm a strong lifelong Democrat, and I am a Biden supporter. And, um, you know, she, I didn't know about, I didn't know about all the stuff that was going on in the news. Uh, she told me about it last month. 
um, she called me and she told me that she had decided to come forward with it and um, and I said, and she told me about the allegations and I said, oh yes, I remember that. So um, then she, we talked again a little over a week ago and I volunteered to come forward. And again, you know, I worked so much, I hadn't really had time to, to um, pay as much attention as I could have. And, but I did volunteer to come forward. And the reason I volunteered to come forward is just I, I feel that the truth needs to be told and her truth needs to be told. I believed her back then when she told me. Um, and I believe her now. And just talk about how you mesh believing her now, that she was sexually assaulted um, by her boss, by Senator Joe Biden. That's her allegation. Um, if you believe her, why you support him? Um, it's, it's, it's a difficult thing. Um, I've, I've always supported him. And um, I just have to keep supporting him now. Um, and it's a little bit harder now after this allegation. Um, I'm a definite anti-Trumper. <laughs> so, um, so I'm having a little bit of a hard time with it. <laughs> so, but <laughs> mostly it's an anti-Trump thing. And, and, you know, he went on, I saw him on um, Morning Joe this morning, and he looks very believable too. But I'm hearing this today, and I heard Tara a long time ago telling me that. So, so I, I'm struggling with it, <laughs> with the with with the, the election now. Well, let me. But I'm not. I'm gonna, still going to vote for him. Let me bring back in Rich McHugh. Um, your thoughts on how the media has covered this story. I mean, ultimately, The New York Times did a piece, New York Magazine, Rebecca Tracer did a piece. Uh, of course, MSNBC is now interviewing Joe Biden today. Um, you've had a lot of experience with NBC in trying to bring out the Harvey Weinstein story first on NBC mm -hmm. with, um, with Ronan Farrow. But talk about the progression of this piece. I think the media was afraid. Um, I'll just say afraid because you know the, there are things in Tara's story, there are some inconsistencies. There's her writings about Russia and whatnot that that give journalists, myself included, some pause uh, in reporting this. But which, when you're at a network level, you weigh those things um, even more carefully when the, the allegations are against a you know presumptive Democratic nominee. Um, that said, um, I'm a little surprised at the at the the fact that the lack of coverage after more voices, corroborating voices, came forward. Um, even after Linda came forward, talk about um, who else, uh, Rich. Well, so right now uh, on the record is so at the time Tara said she told her mother, who has since deceased in 2016. So we can't hear from her, but we did just hear from her on Larry King. She didn't name Biden, but she did say things that, that, that make sense according to Tara's story. And Tara did tell us about this before it was unearthed. So we were looking for it. Um, she said she told a friend at the time con contemporaneously. I've spoken to that friend um, a lot and interviewed her. And um, she's her story lines up exactly. I, I find no inconsistencies with that story. Her brother, Colin Moulton, has gone on the record with, with me and Business Insider and, and others and confirmed parts of her story. He says he was a younger brother by seven years, so he don't, doesn't think he was told the full story because he was a younger brother. But uh, he was definitely remembers being told that you know Joe Biden had his hand up her—inside her clothes or up her clothes. Uh, Linda, who we're hearing from now, and— uh, Lorraine Sanchez, who also went on the record, she works. She worked with Tara from '94 through '96 in Senator Jack O'Connell's office in California, and says at the time that, that Tara arrived there, 
she was was complaining about having uh, uh, experienced sexual harassment at the hands of her former boss in D.C. I asked Tara, I said, did you experience sexual harassment from anybody else in D.C.? Do you have any other allegation? She said, no, I only worked for, for I only experienced it in, in the Biden office at the hands of Joe Biden. So you have a number of voices right there that, that, that and there, there are other people too, by the way. There's, there, I, I spoke with an intern who worked under Tara uh, in the Biden office, and she says she doesn't remember Tara saying anything about sexual harassment or about sexual assault. But what she does confirm is that Tara was, um, all of a sudden, in mid-April 1993, Tara was replaced, and she was no longer her supervisor, I wanna, which she found odd. I want to put President Trump on, who was questioned about whether he thought Joe Biden should respond to the allegations. I don't know anything about it. I, I don't know uh, exactly. I think he should respond. You know, it's uh, it could be false accusations. I know all about false accusations. So I've been falsely charged numerous times. So that was President Trump, who has himself been accused of rape and sexual assault repeatedly by dozens of women. Rich McHugh. It's a complicated conversation, no doubt about it. This is uh, both of these, both of both Trump and Biden now are, uh, you know, credibly accused, and um, we're we're talking about this allegation right now because and, uh, it's Joe Biden. But and, both both need to be discussed. And Linda Lacasse, Linda Lacasse, do you feel strongly that Tara Reid should be believed? Absolutely. Absolutely. I believe her 100 percent. Well, I want to thank you both for being with us. Um, Linda Lacasse has come forward, uh, uh, who corroborates Tara Reid's story, says she told her about it in the mid-1990s. And I want to thank Rich McHugh, um, who wrote this piece in The Business Insider. We will link to that. He's an investigative reporter, former NBC News producer, worked with Ronan Farrow on the story of Harvey Weinstein.